Immigration begins massive ops to flush out illegals. A very good evening and welcome. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. We begin with stories at home. The health ministry has revealed that three children, including two siblings in Sudan District, Sarawak, have been infected with rabies. The victims, aged four, six and seven, were initially thought to suffer from viral encephalitis and showed symptoms of a fever, abnormal behavior and aggression at times, and were afraid of water. The children were warded at the intensive care unit of the Sarawak General Hospital, where two were put on oxygen. Further investigations found that the two of the victims had been bitten by a dog about a month or two before the manifestation of symptoms. The hospital notified the Sarawak Health Department on June the 22nd. Health Director General Dato Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah said urine samples, saliva and skin biopsies of the victims sent to the Institute of Medical Research in Kuala Lumpur tested positive for the rabies virus. Dato Dr. Noor Hisham said an infected individual could potentially become paralyzed or fall into a coma and die if left untreated. Following the confirmed cases, the Sarawak government will take proactive measures to control and prevent the infection of rabies by sending a team of health officers to Syrian. Now, the team will involve veterinary officers, local authorities and the Sarawak Society of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals or SSPCA. Uh, the meeting was held uh, together with the health department, veterinary department, local authorities and SSPCA to discuss follow-up actions on the matter this morning. If they notice that their children have funny behaviour or scared of water, or scared of water or funny behaviour, suddenly have funny behaviour or scared of water, go to hospital. Yeah, because sometimes the uh, children play with dogs and all those things. They got beaten, but they don't tell anybody. The government will not grant extensions for undocumented foreign workers to apply for the e-card that provides temporary confirmation of their employment after the deadline ended yesterday. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said enough warnings had been given and action will be taken on these undocumented foreign workers. Tindakan tegas ini terpaksa kami lakukan kerana Ketua Pengarah Immigration Malaysia, Datuk Seri Mustafa telah memberikan beberapa kali amaran dan saya tidak fikir amaran harus dikeluarkan lagi dan lanjutan dilakukan. He was speaking to reporters at his Hari Raya Open House in Putrajaya today. Datu Sri Ahmad Zahid, who is also Home Minister, was referring to the Immigration Department's decision to start cracking down on undocumented workers starting today. The e-card program, implemented since February the 15th, is enforced only in Peninsular Malaysia and does not include Sabah, Sarawak and Labuan. The registration is free and the card will be given to illegal workers two days after application. Meanwhile, the Immigration Department detained 51 illegal workers after they raided two factory hostels yesterday in Kapaklang. The raid, headed by its Director General, Dato Sri Mustafa Ali, together with 86 officers from the Selangor and Putrajaya Immigration Department, took place 30 minutes after the deadline for the e-card application yesterday. Dato Mustafa said that those detained gave various excuses as to why they had not applied for the e-card, amongst being unaware of the application deadline. He added that it is unacceptable for employers and the illegal workers to claim that they were unaware about the e-card deadline as sufficient information had been disseminated since the 15th of February this year. Persemakan kita, seramai 239 orang yang tersemak daripada lokasi pertama dan lokasi kedua dengan keanggotaan Jabatan Immigration Malaysia Yang saya sendiri ketuai, seramai 86 orang, uh, kita telah menangkap 51 orang. Datuk Mustafa added, operations will be conducted on a daily basis. In Perak, the Immigration Department rounded up 40 illegal immigrants in two separate raids in Ipoh today. Perak Immigration Operations Chief Suhairi Bah Ali said those nabbed were from Myanmar, 23 of them, Indonesian 7, Bangladesh 8 and Nepal 2. 
The raids were conducted at a food processing factory in the Manglembu Industrial Estate and a construction site at Taman Manglembu in Piana Adril between 8.30 a.m. and noon. Hairi said a factory owner in his 40s was also detained for investigation. Now, speaking to reporters, he said the operation was carried out to check premises for illegal foreign workers following the June 30th deadline for employers to register their foreign employees to obtain e-cards or enforcement cards. Immigration Director General Datu Sri Mustafa Ali had said on Friday that a nationwide crackdown would begin on July the 1st, stressing that no more extensions would be given after the deadline. The card is given out to employees for free and is valid until February the 15th of 2018. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid denied claims that Malaysia has stopped issuing work permits to North Koreans. He said the report by Japan's Kyoto News Agency was untrue. Ada berita Kyoto ada berjepun mengatakan kita telah menghentikan visa untuk uh, rakyat Korea Utara. Stressing that no such instructions were given, Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said Malaysia remains in good relations with North Korea today. Now, the report quoted sources claiming that the decision to stop issuing work permits to North Koreans was made following recent diplomatic tensions between Malaysia and North Korea on the murder of King Jong Nam at KLIA 2 on February the 13th. Meanwhile, Malaysians have been reminded to be on their utmost alert to prevent any untoward incidents following terror attacks in several countries recently. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said that Malaysia would not let such incidents to occur in this country. Kita tahu bahawa pelbagai ancaman menerjah negara kita dan menerjah kepimpinan. Walaupun kita mempunyai daya tahan, tetapi jangan izinkan pemimpin-pemimpin untuk berdiri sendiri tanpa dokongan daripada rakyat kerana yang diserang ialah negara. He says security at border checkpoints have already been upgraded following incursions in countries around the world. Steps have been also taken to improve collaborations among security and enforcement agencies to maintain Malaysia's image as a safe country to visit. Now, Thailand has set up a powerful multi-agency committee to intensify its ongoing probe into a Malaysian company allegedly engaged in large-scale illegal businesses, including money laundering in the country. Now, the company, which has wider business interests in Thailand, has been under the spotlight in Malaysia recently for allegations of spearheading a complex pyramid scheme involving thousands of investors and millions of ringgit. According to a Thai high-ranking official, a meeting with various government agencies in charge of law enforcement, including from the Narcotics Suppression Bureau, or NSB, has been held. Other Thai agencies involved in the investigation include the Anti-Money Laundering Office, Department of Special Investigation, Revenue Department, Customs Department, Office of Narcotics Control Board, and the Department of Business Development. The authorities had also investigated the company to determine if it has any links with the local Next. drug trade, but found no such evidence. Thailand's intensification of the investigation into the company is a continuation of more than a year of probes beginning with a raid on a company-linked hotel in southern Thailand in January last year, where authorities found cash in various foreign currencies worth 83 million baht, equivalent to 10.3 million ringgit. Coming up next, a tourism sector needs time to prepare for tax implementation. This and more in a moment. You're watching News on Tour. Beginning today, payments are done using the signature-based system will be replaced with the personal identification number or PIN system. This is to ensure that better payment security for debt and credit card users. Now, apart from the PIN system, customers can also make payments using the tap and go system for low value transactions. Merchant payment terminals have also been upgraded to accommodate the new security enhanced system. The migration to PIN from Signature is part of a worldwide shift which has been implemented in Europe, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, amongst others, with West Asia soon to follow suit.
The government has agreed for the electricity tariff rebate to be maintained at 1.52 cents per kilowatt hour in Peninsular Malaysia and 1.20 cents per kilowatt per hour in Sabah and Labuan beginning the 1st of July until the 31st of December of 2017 this year. The Naga National Berhad, or TNB, in a filing to Bursa Malaysia yesterday stated, with the maintenance of the rebate, the government will spend a subsidy of 1.30 billion ringgit due to rising coal prices to generate the electricity supply in Peninsula Malaysia. The allocation for Peninsula Malaysia will be done by using the Power Purchase Agreement Savings Fund, a fund set up to accumulate savings from the renegotiation of power purchase agreements with the first generation independent power producers. As for Sabah and Labuan, the subsidy is a sum of 468 million ringgit to accommodate the rising coal prices and the generation of electricity throughout 2017. Industry players in the tourism sector will need at least 6 to 12 months to prepare themselves for the implementation of the tourism tax. Executive Director of the Malaysian Association of Hotel Owners, Shaharuddin Mohamad Said, said the duration is appropriate as it provides time for them to modify the operational aspects of their hotels. Now, Shaharuddin said the implementation of the tax puts an unfair burden on the registered 3,126 hotels and accommodation providers nationwide compared to the 21,000 unregistered accommodation providers. Kami dah bagi tahu kepada kerajaan sebenarnya kami tidak menolak terbantah ini uh, uh, dilaksanakan uh, cukai uh, pelancongan ini jika cara pelaksanaannya itu sesuai dan semua isu-isu perkara yang kami bangkitkan berkenaan dengan hotel-hotel yang beroperasi secara tidak sah dan juga yang tak berdaftar itu diselesaikan dulu. The association also predicts that there many foreign tourists will shorten their stay in the country following the increase in cost.